Hey Adam, this is George. Woke up this morning to a great uh, video message from you and uh, I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the time and energy and thought you are taking uh, to give to entertain me and Carlin and I think is a very important discussion. And first off, before we even get to, into any of the content matter of our discussions, I really want to extend to you my sincere appreciation for your ability to really have a productive discussion. After all, that is really the goal of the work that Carlin and I are doing. And you are representing it uh, excellently. Even though we may be looking at things from alternative perspectives, the point is never to make each other agree and see everything the same way. That is not how we were created. And as much as uh, Carlin and I have chemistry between each other, we definitely have difference, differences of views on the same area that we're both working in. And so the, I'm really more about, about a process, not a destination. And I just really want to commend you on um, the way you have conducted yourself and the tone and demeanor that you have uh, displayed in your writings and in this video are just great examples of where we're trying to go because that's how we can move forward uh, in working together and becoming more collective. So with that, I will start to get into some of the content uh, that we are having this great discussion about. Good afternoon, George and Wayne and Carlin. I'm in my office about to finish up the day. It's about 16.30. My computer still isn't working, so it's been about a week. And I wanted to send one last response to, to George. George, I, I noticed that you waited uh, 11 minutes between uh, my response to you and your, uh, what you wrote back to me. I can't find that last message that you sent back to me. Um, I might have accidentally deleted it, but you can uh, find it and resend it if I don't address everything that you asked. I think the only question that you asked was what changed the uh, flip the switch for me. And it w wasn't... Uh, a switch being flipped. I just never had uh, a problem of identifying people by race. And um, I never had any issue in uh, characterizing white people as better than black people or brown people as better. It, it just hasn't been an issue. So to get to your first point, um, you began with the question that you were trying to find uh, in the email. So I, I think this is the right one. And I'll read the last paragraph of uh, my response in regard to that. And what I said was, the logic and rationale you use tend to cancel each other out. Basically, that means you are on both sides of the fence on the issue. For example, with regard to Carlin's question, do you check the white box? You state that you see race as fair and neutral. So then if that's the case, why wouldn't you check the white box. But you said that you wouldn't. Why not if race is as harm harmless as you see it? Then I asked you what was the light bulb moment that motivated you to not use race? Now in this video, your answer says that you never had the problem of identifying with race. So that implies that you see racial terminology and the use of race as a problem. So which one is it? Uh, that's what I would really like to get an alignment on with, with your logic because on one hand you say it's fair and neutral, it's just like any other description of any other body part, but then you say at the, you wouldn't check the white box and in your video response you, you say you were never beset with the problem of identifying others by race. So I hope you see that there's a disconnect, a, a dissonance there, because you've got one leg on this side of it and another, the other leg on the other side. So I really would like to get that one clarified, if at all possible. I just read an article in the Bongino Report uh, about Stephen King being blasted for a comment that he made on diversity that I thought would be interesting to share because he said he wouldn't consider diversity in matters of the art. He said, as a writer, I'm allowed to nominate just three categories, best picture, 
best adapted screenplay, and best original screenplay. And for me, that diversity issue, as it applies to individual actors and directors anyway, uh, it did not come up. That said, I would never consider diversity in matters of art. Only quality. It seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. And so I'm sure you know who uh, Stephen King is and apparently a film director. Somebody else said she was in dismay because of his take on diversity and she admired him. She said, when you wake up, meditate, stretch, reach for your phone to check on the world and see a tweet from someone you admire that's so backward and ignorant, you wanna go back to bed, she wrote. <laughs> she said the most important thing, oh, so King, he backtracked. He said the most important thing we can do as artists and creative people is to make sure everyone has the same fair shot regardless of sex, color, or orientation. Right now, such people are badly unrepresented and it's not just in the arts. You can't win awards if you're shut out of the game. So I think we see it everywhere. Now with regard to uh, Stephen King <clears throat> and this article, uh, as a writer, I'm allowed to nominate in just three categories, best picture, best adapted screenplay, and best original screenplay. For me, the diversity issue as it applies to individual actors and directors did not come up. That said, I would never consider diversity in matters of arts only quality, it seems to me that to do otherwise would be wrong. So in many ways, being an artist myself, uh, I don't think in terms of, I don't think in terms of diversity in the way that our society is using diversity. Uh, primarily because art in and of itself implies and is dependent on diversity. If, you, if you're a painter and you only use one color, then it's pretty boring art. If you're a musician, which I am, and I'm only playing a particular certain style or a particular certain rhythm, and there's nothing to contrast that with, then that's a pretty boring form of art as well. So art in and of itself implies diversity. It implies inclusion of everything. Uh, to really try to get into uh, Stephen King's mindset in his answer, I would, I would first have to answer, ask a couple of questions. Uh, what The first one would be, what per platform or paradigm is he answering from? Is he answering from a race-based one, or is he answering from a cultural one? And that usually starts with self. Does he identify as white, or does he identify as a member of from one of his early originations culturally that his ancestors came from because there is a difference most people that identify as white have European origins most people that identify as black have African origins uh, the irony though is that scientifically everyone originates from Africa so that even makes this race um, concept and this race ideology of differences in people by a uh, visible uh, body trait, very ludicrous, very ridiculous. So that's what I would um, want to know about Stephen is how he's looking at it, uh, how he sees himself, because it's in that how it's in how we see ourselves that we tend to project onto others. And uh, one other thing to add on this concept of diversity. <clears throat> Um, I'd like to read you this uh, uh, information of interest that I think most people aren't aware of in this field. A study on cumulative effects of diversity training noted that although it has a positive effect on attitudes, behaviors, and actions, that after the training, as time passes, people will remember the new knowledge, but their beliefs and behaviors tend to revert back to how they were before the training. And if you're interested, I can send you that link in that article uh, <clears throat> to validate uh, what I'm saying, uh, which really is one of the foundational premises of the work that I'm doing, because I'm really addressing belief systems. I'm not, I'm not really addressing facts and statistics for facts and statistics sake, because it's our beliefs about them that will make the ultimate determination on how we respond to it. Uh, if we have a personal narrative that is so entrenched in our consciousness, 
it doesn't matter what we're looking at. We're going to, our mind is going to make that rock be a paper if we believe that that's strongly, that that's what it is, regardless of the objective facts. So the whole diversity piece, again, as uh, in, reference, in reference to how our country is using it, um, it is very ineffective. Um, and it also sets up a power imbalance. Uh, when it comes to diversity, who's going to benefit from it? Who are we asking to be diverse? Who are we asking to be inclusive? And who are we asking, uh, who, who is doing the asking? Who's wanting um, others to be more uh, inclusive and be more diverse? So that means that one, one side has to make the decision to do it for the other side to gain. Uh, as a man, that's not a, a good equation for me. That's, that's, that's not acceptable. I don't want my, my uh, the destiny, my quality of life dependent on the conscience of someone else who will decide based on their moral uh, clock whether they should include me in whatever uh, quality of life systems uh, that they are participating in. So that's my 50 cents on, di on diversity. I think that it's important to uh, recognize problems without making more problems. I think that in your characterization of me as a struggling and in denial person, um, it, you made more problems for me because I wasn't struggling with anything and I'm not denying anything except struggling with explaining to you the way I see things and in denial of what you're accusing me of being, which is in denial. So I'm denying being in denial, therefore I am in denial. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a, a no-win situation. And uh, Carlin, in one of our discussions, said that I put him in a catch-22, and I guess so have you. Okay, so in the next section, um, you, you, you use some pretty loaded words. I'm sure in your mind they weren't intended to be that way, but I always listen for uh, the type of language people are using. Um, you start out by saying that... Um, in recognition of problems that you should be able to recognize them without causing more. Um, and then you said that um, you referred to the characterization of you that I made, which caused more problems for you. Um, and this was with regard to st st the, the term struggle and denial that I used in responding to some of your replies. Uh, so let me hit those three areas. Uh, first of all, I disagree that in recognition of a problem, it should be done without creating more problems. Um, it's almost inherent that once you recognize the problem, that maybe the first attempts at addressing it may actually inflame the situation. It just depends on whether you're doing it consciously or unconsciously or subconsciously uh, because it's going to always Typically, I don't know about you, but my experience has been that whenever addressing a problem, uh, my initial attempts uh, tend to sometimes irritate or agitate it even more until I figure out the correct dynamics. And as I get older and learn from experience, then I tend to reduce those less effective methods if it's the same problem. But then again, if I'm having the same problem, then that means I'm not really changing. I'm just continuing the process. So it's, it's you know, a, a recognition of problems and addressing problems is a full contact sport. And we all do have to be prepared to take some hits in standing up to the courage of that recognition. You say that I characterized you, um, and I, I don't see how I'm characterizing you when I am uh, I'm observing behaviors, because that's what I do uh, in that, in this, paragraph, uh, I'll read what I sent to you. I see you believe that struggling and denial are negative and critical terms. That's not the intent of what I was saying. They are only typical, normal components of initial human behavior responses when their belief systems are challenged. Now, I do believe I've challenged your belief system. And that's, that's really all I'm doing. And I'm not 
coming from a position as if my position is better than yours. I just want to have a discussion. And I appreciated that, that you responded and you initially responded from a uh, religious Christian perspective. So I wanted to drill into that. And I tried to be as respectful as possible when I uh, approached you with it uh, to let you know that it wasn't from a place of judgment or criticism. There's no right or wrong answers. I just want to know how you really think about it. And all the answers that you're saying that, I, that I'm characterizing you by, I'm not characterizing you. I'm only regurgitating back to you the answers that, that you gave me, uh, such as this whole, what I started this off with, with regard to checking the white box and how you see race. These are your answers. They're not my criticisms. They're not my judgments of you. And I don't have a judgment of you. I fully respect all of your perspectives the ones I agree with and the ones I don't. I respect that and I respect you for having the courage to even enter the discussion. This is not about a battle. This isn't about trying to win, trying to pin somebody in a corner. <clears throat> uh, after, we, after this, however long our connection goes on this discussion, which I thoroughly enjoy and I'm learning from, uh, if you leave with the same mindset, more power to you, you know, because I, I am not that person. I'm good in a lot of things, but I'm not good at making someone believe something that they want to believe. All right, so uh, then the last piece, uh, struggle and denial, just, just to clarify on that, struggle and denial is, is, is good. It's like working out, I mean, you're a Marine, so you know about struggle, you know about denial, you, you, it, it's, it's part of the process um, to, to make us better. There's things we have to struggle with on, on the inside to allow us to be more effective towards the mission we're shooting for. This process I'm doing, I'm, I'm laying myself bare. <clears throat> I take hits from everyone, uh, Carlin as well, with regard to this new way of looking at uh, the race construct. Because people are looking at me like, are you crazy? Everybody knows race is real. Uh, race isn't real. But people will get almost angry and ready to attack you when you dare challenge the belief system of race identity, of, of racial ideology. So struggling denial is part of the process. I'm struggling. Uh, there's things that I'm in denial about, and as I do this work, I have to, I'm, this applies to me too. I'm not coming as an expert, like I've got the answer. I'm doing this work that I'm encouraging everyone else to work. So please believe me when I say that those terms that I mentioned to you uh, weren't meant in any negative way. You, you said that you've never seen a situation where those terms were referred to in a positive way. That maybe you just didn't see it that way. But struggle and denial are part of the process. And once you become aware of that, then you can make conscious decisions on how you're going to uh, navigate those areas of, of um, what's the word I'm trying to say? that present uh, gray areas. You know, a lot of us want to be in the black and white on issues, but struggle and denial is our recognition that there's a gray area that we're trying to deal with, and what side of that do we want to come down on? And uh, I don't, uh, honestly, I, I don't understand you and I don't know you, and uh, it's just amazing to me that you could think that somebody that you interacted with once on a Facebook thread you can now diagnose and have a certain understanding of them. Some of the things that you said were just like, it's comical to me. Um, and, and, and you're saying that uh, my responses are what I'm struggling with. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, to call somebody struggling and to call somebody denial, um, I think in one of your messages you said that, uh, you, that I see it as a negative characterization. And I've actually never heard of somebody saying somebody else is struggling in a positive characterization, with the exception of a song by a Christian artist called uh, Street Free to Struggle. I think The Struggle is the, the title of their album. And he said, we're not struggling to be free, but we are free to struggle through life. And, and life is a struggle, but it's always in a negative connotation, right? We don't want to be struggling. Um, we want to be free. So uh, we have to. But in this realm, I just, uh, I think you got me so far wrong and you're trying to put me in a box of characterizing me with the responses of other people. Um, 
and I think that you have some, uh, uh, I think it's perception bias or it's that bias that uh, uh, somebody already sees something a certain way and the, it's confirmation bias. So I think what you have when you're dealing with me is confirmation bias and all of the thread and everything um, was because of that confirmation bias that you have. If you're going to allow me to diagnose you as you have seemed to diagnose me. So if that's fair. Now, you may not have confirmation bias, but um, if that's the case, and I am open to that being a possibility, and uh, if you're gonna take me up on that, then I think that you need to be open to the possibility that uh, you're wrong about me. So next, you were, um, you made a statement that I had diagnosed you uh, after just meeting you or having one discussion with you. And um, a lot of people tend to do that or assume that because I may be coming from a therapeutic or clinical perspective that I can just diagnose someone right on the spot. Um, that's not how diagnosis works. Uh, when people do that glibly, we, you see that a lot in media and our politics where people are just glibly and randomly associating diagnosable um, uh, disorders to people based purely off of their own perspectives and uh, narratives. I assure you that is not what I am doing now to you, nor what that was, nor was I doing that in our previous discussions. Um, again, it's your responses that are revealing you. It is not me saying, oh, because of that response, that makes you a hypochondriacal sociopath. No, that's, that's not it, that's not my intent. And nor would I cheapen my profession and embarrass myself by attempting to diagnose you. Uh, it would take more than one visit with a client to even begin to get a, uh, an accurate uh, assessment of a diagnosis. Um, but I will go back to your, one of your responses, for example. <clears throat> You posted an article that I believe you thought proved your point that race is valid and that is perfectly okay. Yet when I read the article, and I believe Carlin uh, made the same discovery, uh, the, the article actually supported the perspectives and platforms that Carlin is, is working on and promoting and that I'm working on and promoting. Um, then you made a statement somewhere shortly after that as if it supported your belief that diseases are associated with certain racial groups. And in the, in the article, it clearly states that disease and race are not connected in the slightest. It goes on to say that um, there's no stated disease associated with race but it's the environment and the body's attempt to adapt to it that uh, will, is what people are referring to. So they use the example of sickle cell. And sickle cell is found in populations with uh, uh, risks associated with malaria. And that it's not just related to, quote unquote, a certain racial demographic, but it transcends any culture or any racial group based on where the most likely uh, outbreaks of malaria can occur. And so sickle cell is the body's attempt to repel or reverse the, the damage of malaria. It's got nothing to do with race. Um, so that's where, again, there's this cognitive dissonance where it's just like you say one thing, but then the facts reveal another. And so I'm not sure where you are on that. Let's you move into confirmation bias. And I guess uh, you were trying to return the favor and diagnose me uh, with having confirmation bias. And to that I say, guilty as charged. Confirmation bias is a human um, component. We all have prejudices and we all have biases. The problem is when we either are not aware of the biases we have or we totally deny that we are biased. We are biased individuals. There's things we like, there's things we don't like. 
There are people we like and there are people we don't like. And I don't have a problem with people having biases or not liking what they don't like or liking what they do like. The issue with race, which leads to racism, is when the ideology of someone's dislikes can be systemized in finance, in housing and loans, in incarceration, in education. And I'm not sure where you are on those, uh, those uh, political issues with regard to how race intermingles in all of our politics and systems today. Uh, I'm looking forward to having that discussion with you. But it clearly does, whether, you, whether one wants to acknowledge it or not. Um, confirmation bias, just the definition is, the tendency to interpret key evidence as con confirmation of one's beliefs or theories. And so, yes, we all have it. I'm aware of that. And so m me being aware allows me enough objectivity and humility to take a position where I might not be totally on point in how I'm addressing it. So if you notice, as a result of that, one of the ways that I try to keep my confirmation bias at bay is to ask questions and, and sincerely ask questions for a sincere answer, not a one to try to catch a person in a trap or create a narrative. Because when I ask questions and I hear how that person responds, I actually listen and can be enlightened about the way that person is, per is perceiving or may have some knowledge that I wasn't aware of. Uh, I know in my conversations with Carlin, uh, he has informed me on a lot of things that I wasn't aware of just from his perspective. And I wouldn't get that if I, was, if I wasn't asking questions. You have done the same thing. I'm getting newer information with you from every time I have a conversation. So yes, we all have it, and that's not a crime. The issue is when you try to act as if you don't have it or you're not even aware that you're being manipulated by your biases. You mentioned the song, uh, Jesus Loves the Little Children. That song is very loaded emotionally and spiritually and racially. Um, the modern day version of that song, they changed out the colors to um, grace, gr to grace and race, um, which just perpetuates race ideology. When race is not used anywhere in the Bible, except in these more modern day times where people are just taking what's supposed to be a sacred document and inserting their own contemporary uh, interpretations that fit their confirmation of bias as it comes to skin color. So to close out um, this last uh, section here, I agree with you that um, we shouldn't go around trying to diagnose each other or hurl accusations at each other. Uh, what you said about uh, if someone accuses you of being racist, chances are. If someone accuses you of being biased, chances are. So I agree, accusations are not productive. They're not respectful to the other person. Um, uh, I would just want to con um, convey and confirm that my responses to you are not an accusation. I have not diagnosed you. I have not said you're biased about anything. I've only asked you questions for clarity of the answers that you've given me. Um, you re refer to sin as being the overall um, uh, root of the issue. Okay, we can, we can go with that. Um, based on your faith, that would be in um, alignment, so to speak, with, uh, with that platform. However, sin is an ideology. Christianity, is an ideology. And race is an ideology that, believe it or not, impacts every other ideology in ways that many people are just subconsciously unaware of. So that's the value of having these discussions, even if they're not ones where we all see it the same way. Just having the discussion increases awareness of how other people see things and more importantly, how you may be seeing things in a way that you didn't realize. And if that is, has happened in this discussion, I'm grateful. Even if we don't ultimately agree on race and religion and, you know, bias and all those things. I, I still feel that the 
dialogue is good and worth having because we can't make 100% agreement the goal of every discussion for us to get along in this country. So uh, that's my, my uh, reply to yours. I uh, hope you've appreciated um, me using the personal touch as I have appreciated yours. Uh, I invite Carlin to do the same thing. And there's no time limit on this. Uh, I learn from every uh, inter interchange with you and with Carlin. This is a process that is not a one size fits all. There's no easy answers. And if, if it grows to where we can have several other people in part of this dialogue, that's great. If it ends here, that's fine too. But just know that I've really appreciated you. I do respect you. And um, uh, if you're a friend of Carlton, Carlin's, then you got to be a hell, hell of a guy because Carlin is a hell of a guy. And we haven't met personally yet. We've just done interviews and stuff together, but I look forward to being in the same room with him one day. And, and hopefully that could, would include you as well. So until then, take care, brother.